Does it look like you have thousands of white baby worms in your worm bin? You probably just didn't have a breeding explosion with your red wigglers. We'll explain what's going on in today's short episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. If you inspected your worm bin and found thousands of tidy white worms, you were probably either alarmed at the sight or maybe even encouraged that your worms started reproducing so well. Well, there's no reason to be alarmed, but I hate to burst your bubble that these worms aren't composting worms. These tiny critters are called pot worms, or scientifically, inchitraeidae. Now, I don't want to try to pronounce that word again, so we're just going to call them pot worms from here on. Now, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that you've got a swarming batch of baby red wigglers here. They're about the same size as composting worms, and they kind of move in a similar fashion but the white color gives them away. Baby red wigglers are pink, and there won't be a spontaneous eruption of them like you're seeing with these potworms. Now, why are you seeing these potworms in the first place? Well, they love wet and acidic conditions, and this typically happens in a worm bin that's been overfed. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, and if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do that right now, then you know that I pound the table on overfeeding. It's literally the mother of all worm bin issues. From excessive moisture, which causes anaerobic conditions, which causes bad odors, you you can also get high acidity from piling food waste into your bin or only feeding food waste and not adding carbon-rich bedding. This ultimately causes a noxious environment for your worms. Now, potworms are like mites in that they are often referred to as an indicator pest. This means they're not a problem by themselves. They won't harm your composting worms and they won't outcompete them for food, but their presence indicates that things may be off in your bin. So how can you fix it? Well, there's one counterintuitive thing you can do to get rid of the potworms, which is to soak a piece of bread in milk and put it in your bin. Yes, we're gonna make the problem worse with lactic acid from the milk in order to attract the potworms. Give it a day and remove the goopy mess, and yes, that bread will be basically broken apart, but it's sort of like just a vessel for the milk. You'll just have to kind of take that mess out of there and throw it away, and it should be covered in those potworms. From here on, you can add agricultural lime or calcium carbonate, and just so you know, crushed eggshells are almost 100% calcium carbonate, and this helps increase the uh, alkalinity in the bin, but increasing the alkalinity only masks the initial problem, which is is probably overfeeding food waste. So sure, go ahead and add the lime, but you also wanna make sure to add two parts bedding to one part food waste during your feeding. This is by volume and not weight. Guys, pot worms should be considered fellow composters and their presence alone isn't cause for alarm. You'd know this if you read the ultimate guide to vermicomposting. Now, thankfully, I won't go ask you to read it right now because it's pretty long, but I did convert it into a PDF where we cover anything from the basics of vermicomposting, how to start and maintain a worm bin, how to prevent wet and acidic conditions that give you things like potworms and a lot more than that. Just click this little link above my left shoulder and you can sign up to get that guide immediately. All right, that's it. We're going to see you on the next video.